18 p.m. on the Real Investment Hour. I'm Rich Rosso, Certified Financial Planner, here with John Camerianos, analysts, and Jesse Colombo, analysts for Real Investment Advice. And we're so glad you're here. And Jesse's been, Jess, Jesse's got like a debt fetish. <laughs> um, he's always analyzed debt. Yeah, but listen, hey, debt and interest rates, world revolves around both. Yep. Yeah, and listen, I understand the United States is 14 times the size of Turkey as far as when you look at per capita GDP. I get that. But you bring up some, and you've written some reports on the U.S. economy yes. and debt. Mm-hmm. And there's some eerie similarities. Yes. And I thought maybe you'd want to share that, uh, share a little bit yes, of that. Yes, definitely, that there are many parallels between the U.S. economy and Turkey. And really, it just boils down to basic human psychology, where mm-hmm. when interest rates are at record low levels or or unusually low levels or relative low levels, it encourages borrowing booms, borrowing borrowing. That's binges. why the Fed lowers mm-hmm. rates during times of contraction, right, John? Yes, exactly. we want to spur stimulate, activity, stimulate the economy, yes. stimulate during garden variety, lack of a better term, recessions. That sort of works. During the Great Recession, it didn't. And we had to go to these unorthodox money policies like quantitative easing and all that. But to your point, interest rates that are so low, are, especially to an economy that's 70% consumer driven, is very seducing, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck, right? Right. So low interest rates mean I can afford this monthly payment. I don't give. I don't care how. I don't care about my how much interest I'm going to pay at the end. I just know that I can make this monthly payment. As the Fed adjusts rates, that equation is going to change. And what I'm concerned about is just like a sponge that's very thin. There's only so much water you can put into this sponge. Sure. You can't keep putting water into the sponge and it doesn't overflow. The economy can't handle. The interest rate, whatever this normalization of interest rates is looking to be, I, I don't think we can handle it. Based on the reports that you've written for Real Investment Advice, right. there's only so much or so so high that interest rates can go before you pop whatever kind of traction we've got going here. Am I off with this? No, I agree 100% with you that we can't go back to 2008 levels. There's no way with the amount of debt that we have. And actually, a new report just came out today about U.S. household debt, and it just hit uh, $13.29 trillion. So again, it goes back to these ultra-low interest rates encouraging this borrowing boom. And I believe that that's one of the reasons why we have a so-called economic recovery is because of this borrowing boom. A co- really, corporations are borrowing, consumers are borrowing, the government itself is borrowing, and that's creating this artificial economic growth. Mm-hmm. I call that a bubble recovery or a bubble-driven economic recovery. So for me, I view this recovery as being spurious. I don't view it, I don't, I don't view it as being an authentic, organic recovery. And I believe, as, as you said, when interest rates go back up, it's going to put the kibosh on this so-called recovery. So it's really just smoke and mirrors, essentially. Hey, but it seems like that's all we care about is the short term. But at Real Investment <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Advice, we have to give you the full circle of it. We have to share the full story. And we've seen borrowing increase, and it's done what it's supposed to. Now, how do you unravel this? And Jamie Dimon, he wrote a great piece, or he was interviewed, and he was in CNBC. But he talked about the fact that how did QE create, create, QE created such an incredible event to the economy, the liquidity that it provided. How can pulling it away and rising interest rates actually not create any kind of repercussion at all? Right. We had such a great input on the way in. It's The drug was so strong going in, but you're telling me that everything's going to be fine on and, the extraction? It even, doesn't make sense. Yeah, and even Warren Buffett has said that when rates go up, it'll, it'll be painful. You know, there's no, there's no way of getting around that. Um, higher rates put a big burden on anyone, any company that's, who's borrowed money, basically. And... The, there will be difficult times if, if rates keep going up. Uh, mm-hmm. No one knows that level, Jesse, right. I think. It's, I don't know if, where where the thing occurs, is if we but, knew yeah. that, that would be, uh, we'd be happy to share that with everyone. Yeah, exactly. Just to where, what exactly creates that domino yeah. or that issue, that, that distress that stops or slows down what we're seeing so far? And I think you see it in housing first, mm-hmm. because even though, of course, 
you know, mortgage rates 20 years ago were 12% or whatever they were. We are used to now rates where they are. So I don't know what the rate is, say, on the 30-year mortgage before you curtail activity. And we've already seen some credit card. And now you've got the latest Fed report. It'd be interesting to see where credit card delinquencies are and so forth. I don't know. I haven't le- seen the last report. But there is a point, and that's why I would not want to be Powell at the <clears throat> Fed to try to maneuver this. Oh, no. <laughs> but what I'm concerned about is the fact that he's looking at this normalization and not considering that this is still a, one of the most anemic recoveries uh, post-World War II that we've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. So even though it's been long in the tooth as far as recovery, it's one of the most anemic. And just now we're starting to gain, I don't even know if I can use the words escape velocity, but we're just starting to see some, some, some improvement. But that more is the sign of, to me, a late cycle economic cycle moves that we're seeing right now. What do you think, John? As well, far as, uh, it's interesting. I, I see a report here from MarketWatch. Um, Steve Goldstein, a reporter there, says that um, f- new delinquencies, new household debt delinquencies are actually low right now. Okay. Some report just came out. Well, that's good. Maybe Jesse knows which one it, one it is, and that's, that's a good thing. But mm-hmm. again, who knows how long that's, those low delinquency rates are sustainable if rates go up. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna test it. Okay, this yep. is another experiment. People don't realize they thought the experiment was QE. They thought the experiment was low rates. The other experiment is the path to normalization. When did economics, be, when did economics, economy, and people with Petri dishes conducting experiments, you know? <laughs> you mean like Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, learning as Those we go, kind of basically. Yeah, learning as we go, <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, we keep to reinvent the wheel all the time. People don't realize, I've done a lot of study on the Great, on the Great Depression, and I've got magazines of Wall Street from the period. They're all moldy and they smell bad, but they have great information. And there was a period even when Roosevelt actually went in and lowered, artificially lowered rates to spur um, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. refinance. I mean, there's been manipulation of rates. And there was also a $500 million bond buying program referenced in one of the magazines of Wall Street that I have post Great Depression. Mm-hmm. So even QE to some degree is not that original of an idea. Right. And Ber- and it makes sense because Ben Bernanke was a student of the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. So um, and we're going to talk a little bit about later uh, Ted Benno, who was the creator of the 401k and why he thinks the Great Recession of 2008, what's coming, could be worse and what he finds at fault with 401k. So we're going to we're going to cover that. But Jesse, your articles are available now at Real... RealInvestmentAdvice.com. And I, th- I believe it's the second if, uh, second article from the top. And it's just called Why Turkey's Bubble Economy is About to Pop. What's your next... What are you wearing? What's your next bubble fetish? What are you dealing with now? Well, I'm still writing the series about uh-huh. uh, US ho- that U.S. household wealth bubble. I, I, about three weeks ago, I published a, a massive report about the stock market portion of that bubble. So it's not just debt. Money is poured into markets. Asset prices. Low rates have been one of the major pillars of this great bull market, right? Yes, exactly. That's the reason why household wealth has been soaring so much. And well, for we, 20% of the population. Right, exactly. If you're invested in stocks, highly you've done skewed. Well. Yes. So the next part of this report now, I'm going to be tackling. Uh, the U.S. well, what I call U.S. housing bubble 2.0, or or the contribution that ha- the U.S. housing market makes uh, toward the post 2009 U.S. household wealth boom. So you have housing prices have been extremely inflated thanks to the Fed, especially in cities like Austin and Dallas and Houston and Denver. Some of the major cities in the United States have been or actually have soared past their 2008 highs. Yes, and. It's taken a while, but it's amazing to see that, especially in some of the Texas markets. Right. So I'm really looking forward to writing that report, especially because I just I recently moved or seven months ago, I moved from New York to Texas. Mm -hmm. So now we get to analyze the Texas housing market a bit, which is. And it's taken a while to recover, even from the 1982, you know, the oil, the crash here and seeing what happened to real estate prices Mm -hmm. over time that they did not participate in that 2008, 2009 bubble. But they have we have certainly caught up right now. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So if you're buying real estate now, you want to be obviously 
Um, you just want to be more diligent with it. Be more careful and understand what you're what you're up against right, when it comes to pricing. That it's an artificial market. A lot of people are thinking that the reason why the housing market is soaring is because uh, the underlying economy is doing so great, and there's this big shale oil boom, and that's that's partly the reason. Mm-hmm. But the other part of it is because of ultra cheap credit. So it's an ersatz economy and ersatz bull market and housing, and that's what I'm going to be discussing and, and basically just explaining how that helps to inflate. U.S. household wealth make it look like we're wealthier than we really are. And then eventually I expect there to be a reversion to the mean where these markets come back down to earth. Right. And it doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, everybody. Okay. This is not a gloom and doom. It's just reality of debt and how much debt we take on. And with low interest rates, we do that. It's 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 not a Texas thing. It's not a U.S. thing. It is a global human thing. Okay, that's just how our brains operate. And again, we are taking your calls tonight at 281-558-5738 because I know people who listen to this show do not have debt bubbles that are ready to burst. They have managed those bubbles. (laughs) They're not even bubbles. What are they? They've they've got debt debt surfactants. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to look that up. Okay, and you are listening to The Real Investment Hour on AM700, The Voice of Texas. Want a longer talk with Lance about your money? Request a personal one-on-one at realinvestmentadvice.com.